In this video, we're going to discuss and prove some rules for finding derivatives of general functions. Um, and we will also do a few examples. So the first one, um, if f of x is a constant function, f of x equals c, then its derivative is zero. So this is saying that the derivative with respect to x of the function uh, f of x equals negative 205 is zero. Uh, the derivative of the function f of x equals 3 is, is 0, and so on. So no matter what that constant is, uh, if, that, if the function is a constant function, its derivative is 0. Um, there's different ways to see this. Uh, one way to see it is just uh, we know that the derivative of a function, which can be written as derivative with respect to x of f of x, or it can be written as f prime of x is the slope of the tangent line. Um, and so what is the slope of, of this function at any point? Uh, the slope is horizontal. Uh, the slope is 0. Uh, so that's one way to argue that the derivative is 0. Another is to use the, um, just the definition of the function. So the derivative with respect to x of f of x is, um, or the definition of the derivative, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Uh, what is that? That's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of anything is the constant c minus f of anything is the constant c. So f of x plus h is just c. f of x is c. This is all over h. So this is the limit as h approaches 0 of 0 over h. Um, so this is 0 over a very small value. Remember that the limit as h approaches 0 is not equal to the value when h is actually 0 by necessarily. It is the limit as h approaches 0 as h gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is 0 over a very, very, very small number. Uh, what's a 0 over a very, very small number? It is 0. Uh, so those are two ways to see that the derivative of a constant is 0. The next two properties of the derivative we'll discuss are the following, the sum and difference rule and the constant multiple rule. And this is just saying that uh, derivatives work the way you'd hope they would for adding and subtracting and from multiplying by a constant. So, um, uh, so let's look at this uh, constant multiple rule first. So this is saying that the derivative with respect to x of a constant times any function is the same as what you would get if you took the constant outside the derivative and then just multiplied the derivative by, well, sorry, multiplied the constant by whatever the derivative of f is equal to. Um, so let's just verify that that's true using the definition of the derivative. So, so, so that's the derivative with respect to x of c, a constant, times a function f of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of c times f of x plus h minus c times f of x all divided by h. And so we could pull the c out of there that, or out of the uh, numerator. That's limit as h goes to 0 of c times uh, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And by definition, or uh, we know from properties of limits, that the limit of a constant times something is the same thing as pulling the limit out front. So this is equal to c times the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. And again, uh, that's from previous properties of limits that we have studied. So that's equal to c times, and then that's just the definition of the derivative f prime of x or the derivative with respect to x of f of x. So yes, it is true that um, the derivative of c times f of x is equal to c times the derivative of f of x. We can pull the constant outside of the derivative if it is multiplied by the function. And similarly, the proof of the sum and difference rule for derivatives um, is just based on properties of limits. So we proved previously that 
the limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches c is equal to the limit as x approaches c of f of x plus the limit as x approaches c of g of x. Um, so um, the proof of the derivative of the sum or the difference um, being equal to the derivatives of those functions separately added or subtracted together is uh, very similar to this, just using properties of limits. All right, in the last video, we proved the power rule. We proved that for any real number, well, we proved that for any positive integer n, the derivative with respect to x of x to the n is equal to n times x to the n minus 1. Uh, but we said that the power rule actually works for any real number. Um, and so um, we are going to use that fact for all real numbers n. Uh, we'll prove the power rule in its most general form, that it works for all real numbers n uh, as we progress through the course. Uh, but for now, we're just going to take it as fact, though we have proved it for positive integers. So we do know for certain that the derivative with respect to x of x to the 14th is equal to 14 times x to the 13, for example, because um, 14 is a positive integer. We are bringing down the exponent and subtracting 1 from the exponent. Uh, similarly, the derivative with respect to x of x to the pi is pi times x to the pi minus 1. So we're subtracting 1 from the exponent. So that's 3.14 minus 1, so it's 2.14. Um, but And that's an irrational number, but that's just fine. Um, pi is a real number, so this works for it. And lastly, looking at the derivative of the square root of x. So that doesn't immediately look like something we could apply the power rule to. But we know that the, deriv that, um, the square root of x is the same thing as x to the 1 half. Um, so that's just another way of writing x to the 1 half power. And so to take the derivative, we bring down the exponent and multiply it by x to the 1 half to that exponent minus 1. And so that is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And we could write it, we could leave it like that. That is a correct answer or a correct derivative. Um, we could also continue to simplify that and say that it's equal to 1 half. And then remember that a negative exponent flips the fraction. So this is 1 over x to the positive 1 half gets rid of that negative exponent. And finally, if we wished, we could write that as um, 1 over 2 times, and then x to the 1 half, as we saw above, is the square root of x. So 1 over 2 times the square root of x. All right, now we've got a few rules for derivatives under our belt, uh, things that we have proven. And so using the power rule, the derivative of a constant, the sum difference rule, and the constant multiple rule, we can use all those tools together to find the derivative of any polynomial. Um, so let's look at some examples. Let's find the derivative with respect to x of the polynomial um, 200x to the fourth minus 3x to the second um, plus 12. So what's the derivative of that? Um, if I'd asked you to do the derivative of that using the definition of the limit, that would take you, you know, at least a few minutes. Um, but here we can just use the derivative rules we know now, that this is equal to uh, the derivative of 200 something, whatever it is, is just going to be 200, you can bring the constant out front, times the derivative of x to the fourth, we know that's 4x to the third, uh, we're bringing down the exponent and subtracting 1 from the exponent using the power rule. Minus 3, again the constant multiple rule, so um, minus 3 times. Uh, now bringing the exponent down, 2x to the 2 minus 1 is just 1. And then plus the derivative of 12 is 0. The derivative of any constant is 0. So we can simplify that, and that's equal to... 200 times 4 is 800, x to the third, minus 6x, and that is our entire derivative. So I'd like you to try a few of these out. Um, so find the derivatives of uh, 1, g of x is um, 5x to the third, plus 2x minus 10, uh, 2, f of x is 90 times the cube root of x, plus 2 times x to the negative 8 power, and 3, uh, h of t is equal to 10t squared 
minus 3 over t to the fourth plus e squared. So these are all derivatives that you can find using the rules that we've discussed so far. So pause uh, and grab a piece of paper, try those out, and we'll talk about them in a moment. All right, for our first one, g of x is defined as that. g prime of x is a derivative of 5 times something is just 5 times whatever the derivative ends up being, constant multiple rule. So that's 5 times 3, bringing down the exponent using the power rule, x to the 3 minus 1 is 2, using the power rule, plus the derivative of 2 times x, we can use the power rule for this as well, um, that is constant multiple rule, 2 times, uh, bringing down the exponent, this is like a secret 1, um, times x to the 1 minus 1, and then minus derivative of a constant, derivative of 10 is 0, and so that's equal to uh, 5 times 3, that's 15, times x squared, plus 2 times x to the 0. Anything to the 0 is 1, so we could write that as 1 if we wish, minus 0, so we don't need to leave that, and uh, then that's just simply 15x squared, plus 2. So that's g prime of x. That's the derivative of g of x. One thing to note here, uh, we used the power rule to take the derivative of 2x, um, but just to make it uh, very, you know, uh, we could also think about this in terms of the slope of a linear function. Um, so for a linear function at any point, the slope is constant. Uh, the slope of a linear function by definition is always the same. Uh, so the slope of y equals 2x is 2, and that is the derivative. Um, so for any linear function, uh, y equals mx plus b, y prime is always just going to be the slope of that line. All right, for the function f of x equals 90 times the cube root of x plus 2x to the negative 8, um, let's first rewrite that function so that it's easier to take the derivative of using our rules. So f of x can also be written as 90 times the cube root of x is the same as x to the one-third power plus 2x to the negative 8. That's the same as, oh, 2x to the negative 8 is no problem that we can use the power rule on. Okay, so now we have um, written the function differently so that it is easier to take the derivative of using our derivative rules, uh, the constant multiple rule, the power rule, the sum and difference rule, and um, in general derivative of constant, which doesn't apply here. Uh, so we have not taken the derivative yet, we've just rewritten the function. Now let's take the derivative, f prime of x is equal to, using the constant multiple rule, 90 times the derivative of x to the one-third is one-third x to the subtract one, one, so I'll just write that out for now, one-third minus one, plus two times, constant multiple rule again, negative eight, x to the negative eight minus one is negative nine, and so now let's simplify that. That's 90 times one-third is 30, x to the one-half minus one, so that's x to the negative two-thirds. If you want, you can always do math out on the side. One-third minus one is equal to one-third minus three-thirds. So that's one-third, um, or one minus three over three. That's negative two over three. That's negative two-thirds. So 30x to the negative two-thirds plus two times negative eight. So that's minus 16x to the negative 9. And if we wish, we could rewrite that as, um, so 30 times x to the negative 2 thirds, that's 30 over x to the negative 2 thirds. A negative flips the fraction. And um, so we could write that as x to the 2 thirds on the bottom minus um, 16x to the negative 9. So that's 16 divided by x to the 9th. Um, and finally, we could write that as um, 30 over and then x to the 2 thirds. Uh, remember that um, the 2 uh, state, the 2 in the numerator of an exponent is just x squared, whereas the denominator in an exponent means it's a root. 
So this is x squared to cube rooted is what is equivalent to x to the two thirds um, minus 16 over x to the ninth. So these are all equivalent ways of writing the same thing. They are all correct. Um, but you should be comfortable going between those equivalent um, ways to write those expressions. All right, last one. h of t is equal to 10t squared minus 3 over t to the fourth plus e squared. Um, so again, we're going to start by, before we even take the derivative, we're just going to rewrite this in a form that's easier to think about in terms of the power rule. Um, so this is 10t squared minus 3t to the negative 4. Um, a, an exponent in the denominator is the same as t to the negative same exponent plus e squared. So now we can take the derivative h prime of t is equal to 10t squared, so 10, constant multiple rule, times 2t. Uh, so bringing the 2 down, subtracting 1 from the exponent, so this is really 2 minus 1, which is 1, so t to the 1 is just t, um, minus 3, bringing down the exponent, negative 4, t to the negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5, so that's negative 5, plus derivative of e squared. So e is not the variable um, of the function. E is a constant. Um, e is a number. It's like uh, 2.718 blah blah blah. Uh, and it's a special number that um, we will see some of the reason that it is special soon in the course. But it is a constant just like pi is. It's a real number 3.14 blah 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 blah. Um, so the derivative of each of those things is 0. They're just numbers. And e squared is also just a number, um, so it's just 2.718 da 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 squared. Um, so this is a constant. And because it is a constant, its derivative is 0. So we can rewrite um, h prime of t is equal to 10 times 2, that's 20, t to the 2 minus 1, that's 1, um, minus a negative 3 plus, uh, times a negative 4, so that's plus 12 t to the negative 5, um, and that's just fine. Um, if we wish, we could rewrite it one more time as h prime of t is equal to 20t plus 12 over t to the fifth.